<laughs> uh, my video is not really working today, but uh, yeah, we can make do. Can you guys hear me all well? Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> How not to start a business meeting. Do not go into a maniac and laugh to disturb everybody. So do you guys mind if I facilitate today? <laughs> yes, please. So Casey, okay, so we can't see the screen, but uh, have you set the spreadsheets yet? Because I think that was one of the most important things that uh, James was lacking for his presentation. And maybe if you could, could we share, sure. could we share a screen, Casey, and maybe put them up? Um, I don't really have them on this computer. That's why I haven't had them yet. So there's, a uh, have to look through them and also update it. Because the spreadsheets probably also need to be tuned to like the size of the farm that you want. Right. What what uh like what size production are you guys uh, looking to start off with? I think it, it depends upon I guess the reserve, the amount of building space, the uh, I think the first one, right, is gonna be more test cases. So the I guess like the Song Gees probably have land and James is talking to their CEO of business and she's very supportive. And uh, maybe James, you could tell him a bit about that. I'm thinking something <laughs> moderately, like medium sized. Um, I think somewhere down the road, I'll look at the bigger facilities, but I wanted to be able to put out the kind of numbers that would be um, impressive or at least, you know, appreciated by whatever nation I'm sharing this technology with, right? And uh, so it's really that the kind of scale if it's multiple, you know, buildings, or if it's just one good size one, it's kind of things I'm willing to, to, to kind of talk about and look into, because it comes down to cost and, and everything else, right? So. Yeah, so are you thinking like, like 10,000 plants or like 100,000 plants? Like what would be appealing to that? Like how many people would need to be fed? Yeah, so it's, it's not, um, I would say, probably around 50,000 probably to be able to put out the numbers where you can sell half and, and, and uh, rebate the other half. 50,000. Oh, so it's a pretty, it's a pretty large system. Yeah. yeah. Is it? Yeah. I yeah mean, okay. To feed 50,000 people means you need to be popping out a couple, a couple like 50,000 plants every other day. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah I have to, I can't deny my ignorance in some of this stuff too. Like I'm, I'm looking at the, the facilities that are kind of larger scale, but I'm realizing that the startup cost of those is kind of daunting. So I'm looking at, you know, being flexible and open-minded basically, you know, so if you have some feedback on that, I sure would appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, I have numbers that are based around uh, just these small aquaponic systems. They're pretty little actually. They're uh, about 2,500 plants per month. Hmm. That's, that's like, yeah. How I many, that's 2,500 people you're saying that could feed? Uh, no, that's just plants. Yeah. So that's how many plants you can grow in a month. Right. You know, if, you to, if you want to feed that many people, you need to pop that out every day. Right? Mm. Um, so I could send you, you know, I have something I just found in my email. It's a, it, it's going to take some time for you guys to go through this and, and for the master. It's kind of like a large calculator thing. Mm -hmm. so Perfect. This, this, this is uh, 2000. This is just like three years old, <laughs> but it should work. Do you have them in front of you or this is somewhere else? This is, I'm going to send this to you guys right now. Could you do a share screen? I can, but it's not really going to be helpful. Like you got to get into this calculator. It's kind of the thing where you have to play with it. Mm -hmm. I can give you guys a good run through. But does it convert easy to the Excel spreadsheet kind of format? It, it's it's an Excel spreadsheet. File. Oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here, let me. I'm just going to forward you this email. Okay, I'll make you. Uh... What's what's the best email? I'll, um, I guess maybe to both Elijah Ignatius at Gmail. E L I J A H I G N A T I E F F at Gmail. 
And Elijah can forward it to me. Okay, and that's, uh, did I get it right? Uh, I-T-N-A-T? I-G-N-A-T-I-E-F-F. Oh, I-G. Ignatio. Russian. Russian. Okay, Casey, you're the host. If you want to share screens and just show us a bit. <laughs> That's an interesting song to be a whistling away. <laughs> Okay, let me check. So far, no. I got it. You got it? Five attachments. And then, the, so the 26 foot biodome cost pricing? Correct, yes. Okay. So, how does is that the dome that does 2,000 plants? Yeah, so this is a 26 foot dome that does this many plants. Yeah, if you go vertical, you can get it cheap. So could we have a, a whole bunch of biodomes? Yeah, I mean, this would be just one, one biodome that people, like I would say you would probably need to feed 2,500 people, you probably need a dozen of these. Mm -hmm. So you can scale it from there. Yeah, we're at multiple, guess, yeah, multiple domes. But I guess what, once you knew how to build one, then you could just keep on building them, right? And you just build as many. Uh, I mean, that's the idea. Yeah, do you see my screen now? Yep. All right, so you kind of need, do you have it open? You guys should have this open. If I'm going to walk you through it because then you can like start playing with the numbers. Okay, I'll put it on another screen here. What the heck? Have uh, Casey, quick question. Have you ever had any um, issues where you have to like separate your plants when there's like certain kind of like diseases or things like that? You have to kind of like separate the plant so it doesn't get the whole system kind of messed up. Because I hear that's a, sometimes a problem in closed facilities is the ability to, to separate or segregate the, you know, yeah. the plants with funguses and things like that. Yeah, I mean, uh, of course, in, in any type of situation, you get mites. You have to yeah. definitely quarantine plants. Mm. Um, I haven't done that. I'm not really a farmer, but yeah. I, I know this as a thing from my studies. Mm. So, Casey, a quick question. Um, if you, if you, we could book you right now, you came down and built it from scratch, and you did the building, how much would it cost? For one uh, you mean the building of the dome? Yeah, for one of these. Uh, well, the thing is, this is a this vertical system right here that I made. I don't really make these anymore, okay. so this is kind of I'd have to redo a whole entire type of system that would be an updated version. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't I don't really recommend this. I I sent this out to a bunch of people who are really enthusiastic about aquaponics, and they really they got it down. Only a few of them, and um, yeah, I didn't really. I didn't really follow up on it. So, I mean, mostly right now, what I do is I make a dome or the pyramid shell. And then I would, um, if there was a budget to do a vertical system, it would it would probably be pretty expensive. I'd have to do all new molds to go vertical and then make them all like twice as big. Um, so it's, yeah, it's kind of hard to say. I think I spent almost 120 grand making the molds for this system. 
and I, I almost believe it's going to be around 250 grand to make the new molds for a new system. Um, and then so, what, once you have the molds, you can pop them out production style, or is that? Yeah, yeah then, then, then we can replicate it for much affordably. Um, so the startup of it's pretty high, you know, to get all the different molds made. But the kind of land, like what kind of floor do you need for that kind of stuff? Um, I would, in Canada, I would go with the cement uh, slab with a radiant heat floor. And so you just you just need basically flat land, right? That's uh... yeah. I mean anywhere. I mean flat land and, and a cement pad with with tubes that can run heat through it. Because you're gonna need that in cold climates for sure. You want know, to keep as much warm water as possible to maintain uh, a, a constant temperature. But as far as the dome is concerned, the dome is built in one day, maybe even a half day. So as long as the foundations are set up, the dome could go up in, you know, probably four or five hours. Holy shit. Hey, um, James was wondering about the, the specific, uh, I guess, the thickness of the bars and, and the joints that could they meet, be made stronger? Uh, yeah, yeah. Right now, I, I have a version that's a, a forty millimeter by forty millimeter, so it's a little stronger, twice as strong, really. Um, that is a square tube frame. It's a different than the round tube frame. And with that, in the Canadian climate, like, have you? Um, what's what's where is your building in mostly hot weather, or is it cold, or both, or where's your expertise? Um, I've been mostly building hot climates. So you've never built in a cold climate that goes through winter? Not really. I mean, uh, Nevada City is the closest to winter that I've seen. But no, most of these have gone to uh, uh, Thailand and uh, Burning Man, and different deserty climates. So yeah, like when you want to have snow load and you want to have insulation, you have to do a double dome and make it thicker. Uh, but as far as greenhouses are concerned, like I said, the polycarbonate creates a greenhouse effect. So it stays warm in cold climates. So that's a little bit of insulation, but mostly the sun coming through is what warms it. So you would feel confident? Mm. Absolutely. Polycarbonate's very strong. Let, let's just say everything went perfect and uh, you were available. When would be the earliest time that you could be booked to come up here and do it, just in case it, it was that? I probably would not come up there. Um, it would probably be, it, it's pretty much the easiest thing you could possibly do. It's uh, any untrained person can probably build it in six hours. And anybody that has uh, any type of general contracting experience can do the foundation. I'm pretty much like, grounded here in Nevada City working on a housing project. So I don't really have a lot of time to go anywhere. Okay. Uh, but I've designed these so that I don't need to go anywhere. They're all Lego sets. They're, they're, really? Yeah, anybody can build them. The hubs have all the markings on it. So you can basically just press, you can just go from uh, A pipe to B pipe to all the hubs. There's only two different types of pipes for the structure. Well, that's fantastic. Same with the pyramid. I could send this pyramid anywhere and anybody can build it. It's, it's very easy. Actually, it's, it's impossible to do it wrong because the parts just don't fit. <laughs> so how much is a dome just by itself with nothing in it and no, like just as you would send it? Um, for this one here, you guys can see the pricing here. This is a 26 foot dome. This is it with a cement foundation and aquaponics system like kind of uh, whatever you, whatever this is done locally, it's probably what it costs in cement and rebar. And then the aquaponic system, I was selling for 10K, but it's not really something we could probably do right now. Uh, but the dome panels and the frame come out to be around eight, nine, nine, 9,100. Really? That's US? Yeah, US. And do you have like, like 10 of them around, or do you have to build them independently, or you just build to the cost, or how do you do it? Well, right now, I actually currently have about 15 domes in stock of the round tube variety. And then I'm making a new version with the square tube variety, which is gonna be done probably in a couple months. So 15 domes, how much would you sell all 15 for? 
We could probably do, uh, if it's 15 of the round two or square two. Well, I guess the round, are, are the round two just, are they less hardy or do you think they, they'd be fine in the winter? I mean, the round two domes are, are strong enough uh, at that size for really anything. Um, it's a little different to get the panels in there though. So it's a little easier to seal everything up with square tubing and it's stronger for snow loads. If you guys do have a snow load, I don't think there would be a snow load on this because the warmth would melt the snow off of it uh, from the radiant heat floors. Um, but yeah, I mean, in, in this, so what you're seeing here is cost pricing. So normally I sell that dome for probably around 18 to $19,000. Oh, okay. So is, do you have blueprints too for like where you do the uh, plumbing and everything through the concrete pad and all that stuff? Uh, I can make blueprints. Like water in, water out, power in, power out, yeah, all that you, stuff. You got to know where your, uh, your drainage is going to be. And then you just, yeah, it's, it's pretty easy to make that cutting plan. I have a foundation plan where the footers. Yeah. Um, I don't have a drainage plan or an electrical plan because that changes. You know, yeah, yeah. There. Yeah. Uh, but that's easy for me to make. That's not yeah. too good. Because so I like this, like it's very impressive, the numbers and everything. And, and just a question, if we were, if I was interested in just the domes and working with you as the sole supplier for say the domes, but I wasn't as, um, what, um, just, yeah, just, just looking at the door, I really like it. So yeah, the pricing is good. Yeah. And if you guys figure out a way, like, like if you want to do a vertical system using dirt or however I can help out. This mm -hmm. is the old system that I had. It's, it, you know, it may be, it was consisting of these pots. Mm -hmm. And um, if I made a new system, I would make it like this, but twice as big and I would put soil in it. Mm -hmm. okay, so I would just change it up a lot. But all of these items I can get, um, I think this is all at cost. Yeah, these are all at cost. So this entire sheet is made based on me doing things at cost and then doing a joint venture in the farm. Mm -hmm. That was kind of like the, uh, the plan for this one originally. Of course, that never really worked because only a couple farms really became successful. And then once they did, you know, I, they just kind of is part of the business model. So, so could, could I, which percentage would you want on top of this for your end? Well, as of now, since I'm not making aquaponic systems, unless we actually go big and make a new one, if we make a new aquaponic system, we can talk about that, but that's going to be like a really high end, I think like that would be a, a good amount of time making injection molding and is just a good amount of time. So like if we actually decided to make a full agricultural system inside, um, I would do things at cost and then just share on the back end and it's pretty negotiable. I'm not too attached to what that Another is. quick question about if I wanted to be able to put LED light towers in and surround these with LED light towers so I don't have to just rely on sunlight because in some of the conditions that you're not gonna get a lot of sunlight, like especially out here on the coast, in the fall, winter, and spring, you're getting a lot of cloud cover and everything else. Uh, but if I wanted to have the LED towers and the plants surrounding towers, like in a circular pattern, is it designable that way? Yeah, uh, yeah, easy. The, nice. I got some LED light strips. I was getting mm -hmm. for about $15 each. Mm -hmm. And um, they were great. They're, there's all full spectrum LED lights. Um, I actually have these in stock still, this, these 96. Mm -hmm. They're great. Um, I'm a big fan of LED lights. If you don't have sunlight, you can do it. You can mimic the environment. That's it's great. It's yeah. definitely the way to go. So if, just real quick on this, if you guys um, play with this calculator, so once you figure out what kind of food you want to grow inside, whether it's my system or you're doing something else, mm -hmm. you can come in here and change. You can um, change what the investment is, and then you can change what your cost is for rentals. And when you change these numbers, it changes all of these tabs, right? So if you come in here and you say that this is going to be 10,000 plants, wow, it should change everything oh, wow. From here. Wow. This is so, did you make this personally? I, you know, an accountant person made this for me and then I, I piggybacked it and I've been playing with it since. Wow. It's, it's 10,000 plants right here, see? And then um, you can put in here, you know, the, the value and the production. And then over time, it goes to the cost of revenue, personnel. You can put in here your employees. I just have another quick question. With the aquaponics, is it possible to do things like crayfish and prawns? Because I know tilapia is kind of 
it, it's kind of viewed suspiciously in the Western market, but it's really big in, in other markets overseas. Uh, yeah, I'm not a fan of tilapia at all. Yeah, yeah. I would try to do uh, trout or uh, salmon. Have you heard of prawns in aquaponic systems? Yeah, yeah, it works. Okay. But yeah. even prawns, you know, like, what are you feeding it? You know, there's yeah, it's just a lot of uh, unknowns about commercial fish feed. Mm -hmm. No, I definitely wouldn't be looking at that. I'd be feed pellets like that. I'd, there's some really good companies out here that have some good options for stuff like that. Nice. So once you guys master this, you can get to the end of this 18-page summary thing, and I'll tell you what your, your uh, net revenues and stuff will be. So play with it. It's, a, it's definitely a, a fun It's a fun thing to play with once you actually get the hang of it. What is EBIT on that last page? EBIT? Yeah, at the top. I think it's so I was thinking, wondering if, about the American taxing and all that kind of stuff. I think it was in uh, revenue, right? Wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, there. It's all kind of the same thing. So uh, I don't know. Net earnings is really the, the, this is the main one that you want to be looking mm -hmm. at. Not sure, these are all the same. So it must be the same. Sure. That's yeah, perfect. Is, yeah. This is super helpful, Casey. Thank you. Yeah, for absolutely. So yeah. Yeah. I just, I just don't really know. I, I wish I had a, an aquaponics system or some kind of agricultural system to put inside of it. I just don't currently have it. And I, I do have a design in mind mm. and I'm ready to like start working on it, but it's, um, yeah, it ended up being like a two year thing for me and like a lot of money and time and a lot of like failed joint ventures. So for me, I'm kind of just like, I'm just going to sell domes and pyramids and things Yeah, at this point. But I definitely have access to all the, the, the items. Like if you find, if you identify like kind of the tank systems that you want and you want like, you know, bio filters and all this kind of stuff, I can source all of these things in bulk. Mm -hmm. Plus yes. bio filter yeah. stuff. That is amazing. Wow. I would definitely be growing salmon or something that's yeah. already, but it takes about two to three years for it to get to, to mature. And then you have to figure out a food source. Because mm -hmm. I know there's a couple of ones I've watched where they do prawns or crayfish in their aquaponic systems and, and they seem to work really well. Yeah, they're probably good. I just don't know how much food it is and, and how, you know, I think it was always an accessory thing. Mm. Like you wouldn't really make it as like a like a like a, a food thing and like a big yeah. money thing. Yeah, that's hey, amazing. I, Casey, let's say you were making one for a human to live in, uh, using the same system. How would that compare to like a yurt? A yurt? Well, I can make yurts, right? I can make domes. Which one's better? It's it's more of aesthetics, like what you guys want as far as an aesthetically pleasing situation. I like domes. <laughs> yeah, domes are cool. I mean, yurts are easier, and they're uh, they're just easier in general. And that's why they're more affordable. But uh, but yeah, you in the cold climate with somebody to live in, you'd have to do a double dome, and you'd have to put some insulation for sure, mm -hmm. or a double yurt. You know, so, something that has the thickness to achieve it. Mm -hmm. No, this is really impressive. There's a lot of scalability, there's a lot of flexibility and stuff like that. So that's what I'm I'm thinking we should talk more and be able to find out what we how you know, being able to help each other. Because if I have something I can show and get interest in, then uh, it could be sooner than you think, you know. We might be able to just get the dome systems going and, and I'll find some way to fill in the parts that I need to fill in to meet the numbers and everything else, but it would be you I'd probably work with with the you know, being sole supplier kind of thing. If, if the nations like the dome concepts, you know? Yeah. And even if they like the round houses, cause I know that when you get into round houses, it's more like native American vibe. Mm -hmm. like people have been doing it for so long. Like the, the pipes here, they're all round houses. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's kind of a common theme to kind of carry over into that. So yeah, whatever they like, I would definitely be able to make it as far as the structure is concerned. What's the biggest dome you think you could do safely? As big as you can dream. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I've done one. I've, I've engineered one up to 300 feet. Wow. So, but, you know, that gets more into, like, the $10 million price range. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And what, what size is, is more applicable? Probably a 50-foot dome. Yeah. In your buck. Yeah. That's perfect. I start on the domes as well. 
Yeah. And they stand up good to like rough weather, winds, heavy rains, that kind of thing. That's one of their claims to fame. Yeah. 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 Perfect. Yeah. I like what I see, Casey. Thanks for showing us this. This has really got me excited. Yeah. Yeah. The 26 foot dome is, is pretty nice. Mm -hmm. That's so, amazing. Yeah. I don't know where I here's the roundhouses so if we did roundhouses it could be something like this that's cool or hexagonal this is another one there are uh 12 sided houses oh wow i these, like those yeah these, those these are, are awesome as well what's the cost on that one <coughs> I mean, again, it really depends. Uh, if we're building in Canada and we have to do insulation, we have to do a double frame. You know, we have to do insulation and it depends on glass. Uh, but I would estimate anywhere from like 150 to $200 per square foot. You know, if you're building like a full on house with like kitchen, bathroom, flooring, electrical building permits and all that kind of stuff. Here in Nevada City, I think we're coming around about $150 a square foot to build a house. It's pretty much a double frame house too. Mm -hmm. So that 12 sided one could be, you know, that could be a 40 foot 12 sided unit. It could be a uh, 20 foot 12 sided unit. Cause I can see that 12 sided being the, being one that a lot of first nation communities would be really interested in, especially yeah. if it had the ability to be insulated and plumbed out and everything else. Right. Yeah. And the fun thing is I prefab it mostly. So you know, the foundation needs to be built and then upon the foundation being built we can just bring it in and build it within like two days how much does shipping cost like from where you are to here like how much would it cost to ship one of them uh shipping is kind of a pain right now the, the cost for shipping has gone up four times uh because the whole china thing so yeah it's probably better to fill up an entire container perfectly to get the best bang for the buck. Like right now, I just got a quote for about $17,000 to ship a 40 foot container to Oakland, mm. which is uh, normally like $3,000. Like sh shipping's gone nuts, eh? Like it's- It's, it's absolutely nuts. So but, it's not really, it wouldn't be cost affordable to get one of them just to start right away, right? No, it, it's, I mean, you could, it's not cost affordable because of the shipping. Right. Uh, it's better to get a full container filled and, um, Make use of it as, as much as possible. No, I like it. Unless you order a year from now, <laughs> which uh, the shipping should go down next year. Yeah, it wouldn't be anything this year. It is, you know, the dome kind of thing would be probably taking time to get everything in the planning stages, all my permits and everything else. You know, it would probably be nine months to a year from now before I could think about putting the first domes up to show. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it gives you some time to get that square thing. Because uh, I think that's probably the most viable one is in, in the ability to seal it up and everything else, right? Yeah, you definitely want to keep it sealed. Yes. Yeah. Once you build it once, I mean, you could, it could be designed to be temporary, but more than likely you want to keep it up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. I got to run, guys. Yeah. Should we wrap it up? Yeah, cool. Well, uh, I'll send you guys pricing on the dome so you have it as well. And Perfect. then, yeah, if anything comes up in reference to getting structures going soon, or if you have any agricultural questions that we can make something that manufacturers will be back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's let's continue the talk. I really like this, and I think I'm going to show this to the CEO there, the Songi's corporate business development there. I'm going to I meet her tomorrow. And so I'm going to show her a little run through of my presentation because my presentation I do tomorrow night, I just found out. So uh, I have to, it's only a fifth, it's a 10 minute thing and then five minutes of questions from the panel. So it doesn't have to be, you know, as long as I have some kind of something to show. No, I would just show, I would show them the biodomes and, and the, the photos with the green, you know, the, the growing food inside of it mm. and to see if they, uh, they bite. Because that's the yeah. part of the show. That's exactly it, right? And just it's just showing the 
that it can do its thing and then that's it right so thank yeah. you so much casey i really appreciate this yeah, yeah you're welcome guys all right well let me know how it goes yeah right. and i'll uh, stay in touch thank you right. okay ciao thank you elijah you really helped me to